Well, with this old thing, it's just your run-of-the-mill 636-watt four-output vape station. Stick around and we're going to build one of these. First thing we'll do is prep our uh, power supply. And this one here, we're going to use the 12 volt rail. And this one here has most of its power on the 12 volt, 53 amps at 12 volt. We're going to be hovering around 630 some watts of uh, output, even though it's a 700 watt power supply. Some of that are on the other rails. 633 or 36 watts is what we'll have. And at 12 volts, we can power uh, for the the vaping devices that'll connect to this. We can use the OKRT tens. Those are 50 watt devices. We with the four inputs we're gonna have four times 50, 200. We'll, we'll be well under the amount of power this can uh, output. We can use the um, Raptor devices those are 120 watts each uh, again there times four at 40 watts well under the um, amount of power we have available uh, we can even use dna 200s which is another device that uh, where 12 volts is a uh, suitable um, input voltage and so 200 times 4 800 we wouldn't have enough but i'm going to claim it's fine because that would mean all four devices would need to be max power on its their max setting firing at the same time. And if you do exceed the um, amount of power you can pull from these uh, ATX power supplies, they have uh, some built-in protection. They'll shut down, they'll, they'll cut the power to that rail. Um, so I don't think uh, it's dangerous, uh, right? This thing won't catch fire uh, there's safety precautions in here so for that reason i claim yeah you could have four uh 200 watt devices uh, connected to this because i doubt one they'll all be necessarily at max power and that they'll all be firing at max power at the same time so first thing we'll do is prep the enclosure we'll crack this open uh, even though it has a, a nice uh, finish, you'll want to protect that. Be careful. I did a mock-up um, of another one earlier, and I kind of scratched the, the outside of the box there. Now there's uh, a f the fans connected to right here, so we'll need to pop that off before we can there we go. The bot the part with the fan will be facing down. Um, so we don't need to be as concerned about dinging this up as we do the top of it here. And in fact, what I'm going to do, just 
just uh, I'm gonna cover the bottom and tape. That'll give us some protection while we're while we're working on it. Now there's a grommet here. Let's get rid of that. We're going to want to snip these. You first get rid of I'll give myself more length uh, than I need, but I'm still going to cut all of these short. Let's say about here. In fact, I'll cut them right at the tips, try and preserve the sleeving we have here. I'm going to toss all the, these bits. I'm gonna keep these, uh, maybe we'll use these, all these nylon sleeves here. Next thing we wanna <clears throat> group all of these by color. Um, there's a, does it say on this one? It doesn't, I'm sure it does in the book, but the color scheme for these, or for the wires we are concerned with is usually the same. Uh, the blacks are all ground, the reds are plus five volt rail, orange or 3.3 volt rails. The yellow is our 12. So let's get these organized. Everything we won't be using, um, I'm going to cut short, cap them with either some heat shrink or a or something, and 
tuck them to the side. So the 3.3 we won't use, however, uh, we do need one of them. Um, the brown here is 3.3 uh, volt sense, and we'll need to connect a brown to one of the 3.3 volt uh, outputs. So we'll save one orange for later. I'm going to come, once they're cut and capped, I'm going to come tuck all of these down here. I'll go a little long on these, and you'll see why in a sec. Now I'm worried that this, even though it's snug, may have the p possibility of, of sliding off. So, I'm gonna fold this over. And then I'm gonna heat shrink this. Now it can open up and have the tip uh, come off there. So that'll tuck out of the way here. Next, the five volt reds. We're going to keep one of these. Uh, I'm going to put in for the LED on the front. Same thing, one piece to cap them. And another piece to hold the fold over. <clears throat> now for our twelves. Um, these uh, were these are 18 gauge. Yep. Which might not be enough, depending on the type of device we connect to this. So, for each port, I'm going to set two of these. I'm going to use two per uh, per port. So I need eight. So 
So this is for our ports. We need one more. Um, and I'm not even sure if we need to do this. Uh, the videos I've watched where they convert one of these ATX power supplies into a uh, uh, like a lab, a bench power supply, they always put a dummy load on uh, the output, claiming that otherwise the the output would be unstable. Um, we're gonna have a ton of load on our output with the the vape devices, so I'm not sure if we need to do this. However, we'll do it anyways. So I'm saving a yellow for that, which leaves us with two unused. So we'll do the same. out of the way <clears throat> now our grounds uh, we'll need at least eight to come match with our outputs we'll need another for the dummy load um, and so we're at nine we'll need one the green is um, what switches the uh, power supply on so we'll need one there 10 and the LED so I'm gonna set 11 aside I'm trying to the ones on this side are the ones I'm gonna send tuck away. So that's, I'm trying to separate them like that. Okay, I got 11. few others we won't use the purples uh standby we yeah so we'll tuck this one away too and same with the gray here which i believe is power good we won't need it The rest of these, I'm just gonna cut a bit shorter. It won't be the final length, but just to make this tidier. farthest port we'll have is over here so
this one for our load those uh, resistors we'll use for the dummy load I'm gonna put them around here so I want to make sure that I got enough wire to get there before we solder anything I want to prep the front of this Now I don't have a round bit that's big enough for the uh, the with the the uh, speak on uh, connectors here, but I do have a, a Fosner bit, which is for wood. I don't want to use it on metal and maybe damage the the bit um, so I made the appropriate size holes in the wooden faceplate so what I'll do here then I'll just cut out a rectangle um, you, you won't see it right the wood the, the faceplate will be sitting on top of it so I'm just gonna measure make a mark and I'll use the Dremel to cut out a uh, rectangle Before I cut this, I'm a little concerned that once all this is gone that this side will be flip floppy and it might be hard to glue our faceplate on. So I'm going to brace the inside here with I'm going to cut a popsicle stick and epoxy it in there. To give you an idea. So I'm going to epoxy this on the inside and we'll have to wait for it to dry but once that's set then I'll come and uh, with the Dremel and cut that out there One thing we can do while we wait for that uh, brace to dry is what will be the bottom here. I made these little uh, bumper feet. Um, so we could drill the holes we'll need to 
mount these get the screw out of one of them so I can mark where I want to drill and I'll go um, perpendicular to these uh, so I'm, I'm at a straight 90 I should say parallel or in front of and in all cases I'll still have room for the mounting screw Get the hand drill. I don't want to use the punch on here because this is really thin. I'll probably bend the metal when I try and punch it. So it's The trouble I go through to try and have a clean working area before I start the video it doesn't last very long. We're just clearing the fan with that one.
there we go. It's gonna look nice. And that's when it's flat, it's gonna leave a gap here so air can circulate through the fan. For the faceplate, I have some uh, scraps of this hardwood. Um, not sure what kind. We had the furnace changed a couple years ago and they delivered it on uh, a little pallet made of this really nice wood. So I've got a bunch of scraps of that. I cut it to uh, 158, sorry, 148 uh, by 85 which is the size of the front of the uh, ATX power supply we're going to put this on. Um, first thing... First thing I'll do is... <clears throat> I don't want to split this exactly in four because um, the amount of space Let's say on each side of the connector there's five millimeters of space. Um, if, if we have two one beside each other, this one has five millimeters space, this one has five millimeters space, so there'd be ten millimeters between the two. Um, but again, if we split it exactly in four, the last two on the edges would only have the five on each end, and it wouldn't look pleasing to the eye. It would look like there's less space between the last two than there is uh, between all four of them. So first thing I'll do is I'll about a centimeter in on each side draw a line Okay, so nothing will, I want nothing beyond uh, these points here. Which leaves us with, let's say, 130. Let's find our center, half of that. 65. And I want the center of these two. So half of the 65, 32 and a half, And now I'm gonna. I want my four ports in the center of uh, these. Uh, before we do that, though, as far as where they'll sit this way, um, I want them just a little off center, towards a little higher up towards the top, uh, just so there's more room to get the, your hand underneath when you're undoing the uh, the connector. So if we have 85, let's say 35 for the center of our ports.
the LED I want close to the top I'm thinking 15 so this cross mark here will be the hole for our LED now we have 32 and a half between each of these <clears throat> I'm going to move the ruler so I a little bit in and a little bit beyond the 32 so I can just divide 32 which is 16 so at 16 okay. that's one the glare on this is making All right, there's my holes. Set over the drill press and get started. <clears throat> so I'm gonna drill a pilot hole right through for all of these holes. <clears throat> the closest bigger uh, bit I have for those speak on connectors is a one inch Fosner bit. <clears throat> now I won't go all the way through, I can't, because the bit will hit uh, the plate there. I guess I could put a, a block underneath and drill right through, but I'll go most of the way through and I'll flip it around, line up with the same through hole and finish it off that way. So we got our 
four holes for the uh, speak on connector, the ports there. I'm going to recess. Uh, I'll leave the hole on this side for the LED, the right diameter for the LED and the LED holder, but I want to recess quite a bit here um, on the inside of it, so I'll change my bit. This is a 5 8 Fastener bit. <clears throat> and last, the actual hole for the uh, LED in the LED holder. 316 is closest thing I have. gonna sand this down to I guess about 400 I'm gonna take the break the edge a little bit while sanding uh, give this a spray a clear coat on the front and we'll be done I've already done the whole for the LED with the stepper bit. In the back of the face plate, there's a big recess there, so we'll have room to work. I'd go even larger, but if I go down too much further, I'm gonna start hitting components, so I might make that a little bit bigger once we're done cutting and I've got the, the, the top off. Well, I'll go nice and slow, follow my lines, get that rectangle cut.
<clears throat> There's a lot of uh, sharp edges there, so we'll clean that up with the file. And I'll just be real careful not to jab in there too deep and hit those components. All right, we're ready to glue the uh, face plate on there. <clears throat> so we're ready to glue that uh, face plate on here. I'm gonna wanna put some pressure on here, but the uh, Um, clear coat I put on the wood here isn't 100% cured yet and I don't want to leave marks in it so I've temper I slid in two of the they're not screwed in or anything but I'll put my clamps on this so it doesn't touch the wood I clamp it in there I don't want to do too much because I don't want it to uh, sandwich out of there when I uh, clamp it down. I give that uh, five minutes to tack up before I bother putting the clamps on there. The epoxy's been setting for a while. We can uh, start to work with it. You can see the face plate is on there. It's going to be really sweet. Let's open this up again. set this aside so first thing I'll do is I'll grab one of these 12s or we had one longer right not really this one maybe doesn't matter the dummy load we want to put on here I've got two uh, these are 60 ohm resistors. Um, 
in series you have the resistance so we're looking at 30 ohms with the 12 volts that'll be close to 5 watts of uh, dummy load which is what I'm told we want uh, about 5 watts 5 to 10 and so we'll wire this up and then we'll, we'll have this sitting over here maybe I'll I can't see I'll sit it over there, hot glue it, so it doesn't move around. A little bit of slack, let's say about here. I'm going to strip both of these kind of long. I'm going to want to bridge uh, from each pin like this. We'll tin those. Come and tack that onto here. Okay, I'm going to trim the extra leads on our load resistors here. Clean that up a bit. And I don't want jagged edges. I'm just going to file these smooth. <clears throat> uh, because I can't wrap it in heat shrink. I'm going to give it a couple wraps of uh, electrical tape. We'll get the glue gun out in a bit and glue that down there. So we want the switch to be on all the time. 
So I'm going to solder these together. A little bit of slack can't hurt. Tin these or I'm going to do this. Should have gave myself a bit more slack on the green wire here. Drink on there. So that's done. Our three volt and three volt sense. Now we'll start working with the. No, I'll start with the closest one so I don't have wires in the way as I'm moving down this way. So these aren't screwed in yet. I want to get some proper uh, wood screws, which I don't have right now. But I'll still wire them. So there's four to be able to handle the current there. I went with the four pin one, so we'll go two positive, two 12 volts on two of them, and then two grounds. And then we'll just repeat that on the male side of the uh, connector. And these are, they have numbers, one plus, one minus. So there's one plus, one minus, two plus, two minus. I'll, it doesn't matter, but just to remember and do the same thing everywhere, I'll go the two yellows on the two pluses and the two uh, 
browns or blacks on the two uh, minuses there. I say it doesn't matter. So long as you do the same thing on the male side of it, it doesn't matter which pin we use here, but they're labeled as such and I'll, I'll use them like that. Uh, before I, I'm going to tin these. And again, for routing, I'll try and grab the two that are closest. So let's say these two. Already my black wires while I'm here again I'm trying to grab the two closest ones a little bit of slack Start with this bottom one. I'm f I find I'm using uh, less and less heat shrink. Um, I had comments on another video, why don't you use heat shrink on a specific connection? And if you're going to something fixed like this, I mean, look at uh, this stuff here, which is how it, the, the thing ships. If, if, the, if this can't move, then there's no real need, I don't think, heat shrink. What I did with the power on cable here and the, the three volt going to the sense, I have a connection in the middle of a wire that might flop around, so of course you're going to want to um, heat shrink that. Uh, the other bits there, although they were uh, cut flush, right, they're wires that might move, so yeah, but uh, stuff like this, it's not moving. There's nothing that is moving that can come reach it, so I don't bother with heat shrink in those cases.
one down. I'm gonna it's gonna work. A little zip tie to group these. And we want to do the same thing for the rest of these. Find me two that are close. out there do the strip and tin in these And I did the outside of the bottom one again. Hmm. I just noticed something. I wanted the metal part which is the clip to release the connector on top although I'm looking at it this way and this looks like the top it's actually the bottom lucky my zip ties in very tight I'm gonna well there we go I wasn't gonna, I was gonna unsolder them, but that works.
Not going really tight with these, it's just to group them. Almost there. It just struck me that what I could have been doing all along is this one here. Because I have a bit of slack, I can rotate these and get in a comfortable position every time. gonna be so nice move this aside for a sec got a LED in the in a LED holder here I need a resistor so the longer leg of the LEDs, the positive. I'm 
going to cut it shorter just to solder, but still the positive. I'm going to attach this 220 ohm resistor. Heat shrink that. I'm going to attach a wire on the other side here. We'll attach a black wire to the other leg. And now we just need to connect these. And we can tuck these under there. Um, I was thinking, maybe instead of the hot glue, check this out. The inside. Use a zip tie here. Oh. 
That works. I think we're done. So I'm securing the uh, Beacon connectors. I did one um, using number four wood screws and the head fits kind of perfectly into the holes there. Now I really want to get these as, uh, you know, if one's a little off center there it'll look like crap so I'm using this stick here to push up against all of them. I'll drill a tiny pilot hole then get a screw in there. Hard to see with my lighting, but there we go. Looks good. Do the rest of them. So quick once over, we got our LED mounted in a nice LED holder. The black trim fits with the um, speak on connectors. As far as overall size, it's not too huge. Our mains switches in the back. There's a fan underneath there. I also I kind of want to put a, a handle on this thing. But I'm not sure where. I'd really like the the front, but it'll have to be so off center, I don't know if uh, it might still look nice. Got a a similar black plastic one. It's a little shorter. Maybe that'll match with all the hardware a little better. Maybe in back's an idea. Side. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Um, last thing I'll show you. 
power this thing on again. I don't know how well you'll see that. Let me go like this. LED comes on, and that fan has a uh, blue LED. So when this thing's down, being used, let me dim. Oop, there's going to be some blue light coming out of the bottom of it. And it's quiet. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Maybe that fan will kick in uh, harder once we actually use it and start drawing some current off of uh, off of this thing. There we have it. Next vid, then we're gonna make. Uh, I'm using the term vaping wand, which isn't very cool sounding, but uh, so the vaping device that's going to connect to this, um, it won't have batteries, it'll have a uh, cable coming out of it going to the speak on connector, which will then plug into here. And as far as what cable to use, I got this cool looking um, nylon wrapped cable. I don't know if I'll uh, necessarily use this. Um, so that's the next video. Um, thinking of making a uh, using the uh, now it's Raptor uh, chip in the. Uh, device I'm going to make because I don't have a Raptor build yet on the site. So that'll be a 120 watt device that'll plug in here. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.